we're rolling into the end of the year. And if you've been paying attention to the housing market, you might think that actually home prices are starting to reaccelerate in San Diego. Can that be possible? Well, let's take a closer look. Hi, I'm Nick with the ANED Realty Group. Just want to come at you with a real quick housing update for the month of November. So home prices, we have definitely started to rebound. That's for sure. Uh, just real quick, these Case Shiller and FHFA numbers are seasonally adjusted. These core logic numbers are not, and these are basically quarterly reports. So when we look at the end of last quarter, we've definitely seen things starting to trend in the right direction. However, this is uh, again at the end of last quarter. These are the top 20 cities, and what you can see, great news, San Diego tops the list at 1.7%, which is awesome. We've definitely seen that in the month over month pricing as well, too. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, when we break it down, the Pacific right here, you know, Pacific is probably one of the strongest regions for month over month price change. Okay. Uh, and this basically was Black Knight saying that for the second month in a row, home price growth trended higher in every one of the 50 largest US markets, mirroring a sharp reacceleration at the national level. So things are definitely going up. Okay. Future home prices, though, remember this? I've shown you this uh, in the past. This is basically the 49 year average monthly price movement by month. So basically what you're looking at is seasonality here graphed, right, by, by the particular month and how that affects the price. When we overlay 2023 numbers, though, we know the beginning of the year we were coming back off of that correction when the mortgage rates doubled at the end of last year. Uh, and then here in the middle of the year, basically things started to blow up. And now that we're coming in, you know, at the end of last quarter here, things are getting back to more of what we see as an average uh you know, price appreciation, which is probably good news from a market stability standpoint. We really want to see things appreciation growing at like single digit level. When we start looking at that 10, 12, 15 percent year over year appreciation, it's just not sustainable. Uh, when we talk about affordability, though, things are still being crushed. Realize we look at the average uh, monthly mortgage payment at the beginning of 2021 was about a thousand bucks. Now it's about $2,200, more than double. Realize this issue is why we are down in our inventory. We're down by about a third. And that's basically because not only does this affect, obviously, buyers, and especially first-time buyers, but this also affects people who needed to sell a home and then buy something else. If you're basically in a home right now and your average mortgage payment is about $1,000 a month, and you want to kind of right-size, you want to downsize, you want to buy a less expensive home, but your monthly mortgage is actually going to increase, that really doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of people. And that's kind of why we're seeing a bunch of sellers sitting on their hands. Uh, looking at just some, a little bit of over the past you know, five or six years here for historical perspective on what rates are doing right now. Uh, but this really tells the tale, right? Yeah, okay, even on November 5th, we were at 7.38. That was pretty much the spike here. Uh, you, you know, you're looking at basically, we're still lower than we were all through the 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? It's just that half of all buyers right now are, are first time buyers and they just don't have this perspective. They weren't around basically when this was going on for them to see what these rates were. But I do think if we can get rates back around that 5% mark, we're going to see the market just go right back on fire. It's going to go right back to white hot. So this is why, because basically we have not seen the demand just fall off the cliff, right? You know, this is all the way back to the beginning of 2018 here, right? So these are, these are, these two years are, are, pre-pandemic years, right? So definitely a good, good indication of what was going on. We're right there, basically. We we have not seen a major reduction in buyer demand. Okay? Affordability is still keeping people out. Uh, but I did want to bring this up too, just because of two significant um, things, you know, uh, as far as multi-generational. National Association of Realtors said that multi-generational buying rose to an all-time high last year, okay? We know that we see ADUs now everywhere in California. Basically, the law has been written in California that, you know, anywhere you can build an ADU and no municipality, no city or county can stop you and HOAs can't stop you as well. We're seeing this now, though, with builders offering different multi-generational floor plans, ADUs built right in, but this is why I bring it up, right? Because this is a significant policy change. Now, Freddie Mae has just announced that it will accept as little as 5% down on an owner-occupied two, three, or four-unit home, right? That is a huge change, right? Because you used to have at least 20 to 25% down. So this can definitely, we're definitely going to see more multi-generational living coming down. So anyway, Getting into the numbers here, remember, these are San Diego housing market numbers for October, right? These are all median numbers, right? So the actual true middle, and these are for all housing types combined for the entire county. When we look at sales price, though, 
year over year, that was up 10%. That's huge, right? Active market time, 14 days, down 39%. That means things are selling faster than they were a year ago, right? Remember a year ago, we were smack dab in the middle of this correction, but still price per square foot up uh, a little over 8%. Months worth of inventory though, this is the real kicker. Remember, we need six months of inventory for a balanced, healthy market, right? Anything below four months of inventory is definitely a seller's market. So we're still in a seller's market, even though that inventory has been increasing, right? Remember everything above the line are our lagging indicators telling us where the market has been. Everything below the line are our leading indicators telling us where the market is going. We're still down in volume and that's back to that affordability issue, right? Things right here that you see that, the, you know, our active listings are up. Uh, that's not necessarily good. What we really want to keep an eye on is these new listings, basically. We really need to see new listings coming up, and we'll see what happens with interest rates next year. There's a very good chance rates may come down. We're seeing some strong spending here towards the end of the year as we're coming into you know, all these uh, you know, traditional holiday spending, so, so it'll be interesting to see what's going on, but that's about it. If you have questions about you know, what do those numbers actually mean, what is my house worth, how much equity am I sitting on, is this a good time to buy or sell? I'm more than happy to answer any questions that you have. Just reach out. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember, who you choose to negotiate for you absolutely matters.